So you've taken the plunge and you signed up for your very first art history class. Yay! Whether it's the Spanish Golden Age, Japanese Meiji era, or contemporary African art, there's a lot of work to do. There's a bunch of dates, titles, names with difficult foreign spelling. Does spelling even count? But don't worry because here are my top tips to studying for art history class. One, attend all your classes. And yes, I'm talking about every single one of them. Even if your class is really early, don't hit that snooze button because lectures can be really jammed packed with a lot of information and they usually go in a chronological order so it can be hard to keep up if you missed one of them. Your professor might also have themes or overarching ideas to organize the material. So if you miss a crucial part like their thesis, you might be really lost about how everything ties together. And that can really kick you in the butt later on when that same idea shows up on your final. And number two is to do your reading. Now textbooks can be really expensive, which is sad, but there's a lot of alternatives that can help. If you can afford it, that's great because having your own copy means you can write in it, you can underline and highlight important passages, but if you can't afford it, you should look for other alternatives and not just give up on reading. Sometimes it can help if you ask your professor. Maybe they know there's a PDF version online that you can get for free, or there's a copy in the library that you can check out. Look for used copies or rent the book. Look online for cheaper deals or as an ebook, which is usually cheaper. If you have a friend in the class, maybe you can split the cost and alternate weeks. Buy or borrow the book off of someone who took the class last semester. And if you do end up buying the book, you can always sell it to another student so you can get some more money for your next semester. And actually read it. I know it can be long and tedious and dry, but it really helps. And here's my tips of how to read your reading. One, read through it quickly and get an idea of what it's about. What's the thesis? Can you summarize it succinctly? Two, write down any questions you have. What makes it strong? What makes it weak? And what do you not understand? Three, read it again, but this time more slowly and more critically. Can you answer all the questions that you listed? Highlight and underline any key points, write down notes or questions that would be good to bring up during discussion. Three is to ask lots of questions. Now this is something I definitely struggled with, but if you're going to class, paying attention to lecture, doing your readings, and you still find yourself lost, that's a strong indication that some idea was lost upon you. Maybe a professor glossed over an idea too quickly or they didn't explain it well enough. Asking a question at this point can not only help you, but likely your classmates as they are probably lost as well. And a lot of people are too shy or don't care enough to bring it up, but asking questions will demonstrate that you're paying attention and you're engaged. And I'm sure your professor will appreciate that. That's also why it's important to do your readings before class because it's really difficult to have a discussion without doing your readings. It'll become really obvious that you have no idea what you're talking about. And that will have the opposite effect of what you want. Four, take lots of notes. Not just on your lecture, but also during discussion and during your readings. People have different ways of taking notes that they prefer or work best for them. Some prefer to write on paper while others like to bring their laptops to class. Sometimes it could be a challenge to just balance getting everything down versus having a somewhat organized, coherent set of notes that you can study from later on. And organizing your notes will actually help you understand lectures better. Instead of just transcribing word for word what the professor is saying, it will probably help to actually think about what they're trying to convey and understanding how to break that up into smaller bits so you can visually organize the information in your notes. This can take a bit of trial and error, but once you got a good system down, stick with it and you'll be rewarded with a easier studying time at the end of the semester. While taking notes, it also helps to underline or start important ideas. If your professor is spending a long time on a particular art piece, you should definitely star it or highlight it some way so that you know maybe it'll show up as an essay or a final. 
Now you've gone to all your classes, done all your readings, taken really good notes. Midterms and finals are fast approaching and you need a study to pass your test. Make sure you know the format of your final beforehand so that you can strategize how to study for your test. This is more of a general test taking strategy, but if you know that 60% of your grade will be an in-class essay with an open prompt with 20% being slide IDs and 20% being compare and contrast, you should allocate your time so you could study proportionally. Because identifying artworks is really important for an art history class, I suggest making flashcards. Now you can make digital or paper flashcards, whichever fits your studying habits. But if you do go with paper flashcards, make sure to print them in color since color can really help you identify certain works. And they're important in general for a piece of artwork. If you're a person who's really attached to your smartphone, maybe download an app with digital flashcards to help you study on the go. I used a program called Anki, which you can use on your phone or your computer. And and you basically mark cards as you flip through them, whether you remember it or you don't remember it. And they have an algorithm that will shuffle you cards that you have trouble with more often, so you get a little bit more practice. And you could do the same thing with paper flashcards by making decks of what's easy to remember, difficult to remember, or a more moderate pile, and then you can shuffle through the ones you have trouble with more often. For essays, figure out what the format will be. Is it an open prompt where you provide examples relevant to the idea, or will it be a compare and contrast essay? Take a look at all of the artworks that your professor has gone over. What are the overarching themes, and what do they have in common? What has the progression looked like throughout this course? Put yourself in the shoes of your professor. What kind of information are you trying to convey, and what kind of prompt will demonstrate that knowledge? You can also ask your professor for example prompts. The these won't be the ones on the actual test, but it'll give you an idea of what the format will be and help you prepare. It can also help you look at the class rubric, look at what the titles are for each week, what are the topics, and what would your imaginary essay for each week be? So that when you study, you cover each topic. You're basically casting a wider net so that you don't miss any huge chunks of information. Try to think of artworks that would be good to demonstrate certain ideas. So that if you have an essay asking you to provide examples of work that demonstrate royalty, you'll know which three would be your go-to answers. Lastly, don't feel pressured to stick with only the material provided by your class. The library has a ton of free resources for you, and you can also look online. You might not want to put too much weight on a 2001 blog that has never been updated, but hey, I think Wikipedia's citations are a great place to start. Try Google Scholar or Google Books for more resources online. The more you absorb, the more familiar you are with it, and that repetition really helps when you're stressing out trying to recall details during an in-class timed essay. All you gotta do now is to actually study. Figure out what's the best way for you to study. Does the background chatter at a cafe help you focus? Or do you find it really distracting? Do you need to hole up in your room? Do you need to have snacks? Do you need to ban social media from your laptop or phones for a couple hours? Or maybe you need to set up a system where you reward yourself with a pastry after a thousand words or something. Maybe verbalizing ideas really help you study, in which case you might want to form a study group. Or maybe you need to write everything down, draw out a map or a timeline. Finally, try to make it fun for yourself. I know it's hard when you're stressing out about a grade, but try to remember that you signed up for the class in the first place because you found something interesting about it. Try to find pieces that you really like and identify with so that you can incorporate them into your essays and that will make it a lot easier for you to enjoy it. Don't spend all your time trying to memorize every single word about it, but actually enjoy the work itself. Look at the art. Every single word you're reading came from someone looking at the art itself most of the time. So you can also get a lot out of it just looking at the artwork itself. I hope you guys found my tips useful and let me know what is your best studying tip in the comments section below. If you're interested in art history, please subscribe. I make a bunch of art related videos every week and I share my favorite art related movies, books, and podcasts every month. If you have any more questions about studying art history, please leave them in the comments section below and I'll try my best to answer them. Best of luck with all your studies and I'll see you guys next time.
Whether it's the Spanish Golden Age, Japanese Meiji era, or the Mesopotamian, Mesopotamian, Mesopotamian art. Why did I pick such a hard thing to say? And, oh my goodness. Why? 